Great morning, great morning. Welcome once again to Searching the Scriptures. We're excited about the Word of God. I have come through my surgery. Thank you, Jesus, through the hip surgery replacement on the 20th. And we're back into the Scriptures today. And I'm finding out that the only way we are going to make it in these seasons and times of our lives is that we are connected to the vine, connected to Christ, connected to Him. And we are connected to him by staying in the word. He said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, then are you my disciples indeed. So we're going to pray this morning. We're going to talk a little bit about the plowman. Uh, does he plow all day? We're going to talk about the plowman because God is doing something now in the lives of all of us. And it has a lot to do with the, the, uh, the word of God. And so we're going to talk a little bit about the plowman and, um, what we need to be conscious of on this season and time and all of our lives. I mean, whatever you may be going through, whatever you may be facing, the only thing that's going to keep you anchored and keep you grounded, rooted and grounded is the word of God. It's going to give you peace. It's going to give you joy. It's going to give you strength. It's going to give you happiness. It's going to give you uh, the ability to overcome you're overcomers even by your faith in him. So we're going to pray about that. And we're going to talk about the plowman. Does he plow all day? Okay. And we're going to talk about that. Father, we thank and praise you for this day. We thank you for walking in us and talking in us. We thank you for the abiding presence of that Holy Spirit. Thank you for the blood of the lamb whereby we have been redeemed. We are the redeemed of the Lord. And you said, let us say so. We thank and praise you for our uh, our lives, oh God, are hid in Christ. We are more than conquerors through Christ, which strengthen us. We pray that this word will go forth into the ears of the hills, into the hearts of believers, and converting souls into your kingdom. It's in Jesus' name we pray as we commit ourselves into your hands. Amen. Amen. So um, I wanted to uh, sing, and it, as I said, I thank God for the um, for Him giving me uh, victory through the the surgery. Uh, got a new hip now. I'm, part bionic you got a metal in me so <laughs> it says when you go to the uh, airport now you gotta let them know you got an uh, artificial hip but i want to say this song um it's not i'm going to sing it i'm just going to give you the words to it i'm pressing on the upward way new heights i'm gaining every day still praying as i'm onward bound lord plant my feet on higher ground lord lift me up and let me stand my faith on heaven's table land a higher plane than a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. My heart has no desire to stay where doubts arise and fears dismay. Though some may dwell where those abound, my prayer, my aim is higher ground. Thank you, Jesus. So, Lord, lift me up. Let me stand. My faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I want to live above the world, though Satan's darts at me are hurled. For faith, for faith has caught a joyful sound, the song of saints on higher ground. So, Lord, lift me up, let me stand, my faith on heaven's table lane, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. But you, I can give you this song, but that's what we've got to aim for, higher ground. We've got to aim to move up higher and closer to the Lord. So we're going to begin in the prophet Isaiah. In the prophet Isaiah, um, we're going to talk a little bit about, he's talking to Ephraim. We talked about the harvest in the next season of, of the uh, offering with the sheaf has been waved and now the two loaves. And then after that, uh, we're going to see that the full, everything going to be cut down. Okay, so this is looking from the, from the perspective of heaven. And God begins to speak to us through the prophet Isaiah. And he says in verse 1 of chapter 18, no, chapter 28, sorry. Woe unto the crown of pride, to the drunkards of Ephraim, whose glorious beauty is a fading flower, which are on the heads of the fat valleys of them that are overcome with wine. Behold, the Lord has a mighty and strong one, which as a temperance of hail and destroying storm as a flood of mighty waters cover overflowing shall cast down to the earth with the with the hand 
the crown of pride, the drunkards of Ephraim shall be trodden underfoot. So God is going after the spirit of pride, which we learn through Job that Leviathan is the is the uh, is the uh, the one the king of the children of pride. God is bringing us to the place where every single soul. Remember, God hates pride. He gives grace to the humble. So He's seeing that the um, the crown of pride, the drunkards of Ephraim, shall be trodden under feet, and the glorious beauty which is on the heads of the fat valley shall be a fading flower. In other words, there's going to be some there's going to be some famine coming into the land, and it's not going to be. Um, you know what made me think about this here is that I was going through the preparation for the surgery, which I've had a few surgeries. But what I found out is what made me strong was being connected with people who prayed and who spoke the word. The Bible said we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. God began to nourish my spirit through the word of God and through what he says. It clearly, <clears throat> regular food will not get you prepared for uh, surgery. You may have a good diet, but if your spirit is cast down, two parts of healing. One is the natural and one is the spiritual. If your spirit is cast down and low and in a bad place, I don't care what they do to your regular body. You got people who are physically well and, and apt, but they go commit suicide. So it's the spirit man that you got to work on too to make sure that he is strong and that he is 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 confident. And that comes through the word of God. So we're going to drop down to um, verse 9 of the 28th chapter. It says, and see here, he's going after pride. It talks about the crown of pride, the drunkards of Ephraim, meaning people, uh, uh, I used to say years ago, you're full of yourself, okay? I'm just full of me. And I'm finding out now people don't want to be told anything. They're all full of themselves. Nobody wants to listen, especially when you talk about praying and talking about the word of God. They don't want to hear it. They really don't want to hear it. They want no correction, okay? In fact, he said they, they don't want to retain him in their knowledge. Okay, but this is a time now to get more of God and to get as much as God as you can, because the time is going to come. You're going to look for God and he ain't going to be there. Okay, he goes down to verse nine. Who shall we teach knowledge and to whom shall uh, he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line. Thank you, line upon line, here a little and there a little. So God is saying, moving on from the milk, we need to get on to eat the meat of the word. Things are going to get tough, and it's going to get tough on the inside of people. Naturally, you see the foods are being um, affected by the various scientific things that dealing with farmers and, and, and food, but the spirit of the man is getting attacked too. It, people are... Um, at this state and time, if they don't have the word of God in them, they're not going to be able to make it. If you don't have Christ on the inside, remember Christ himself. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is the word of God. He is the word made flesh. And if we don't have the word in us, you're not going to be able to weather the storms of life that's coming without the word of God. And and I'm finding out he's talking clearly about this pride. Pride is going to be the biggest thing that keep people from going to God, the, the, that crown of pride. I know, I know, I know. It says the wisdom of this world is going to come to naught. Thank you, Jesus. It's going to be about God. But he says, um, it was still in the 28th chapter of Isaiah. He says, for um, with stammering tongues and other tongues will he speak to this people, to whom he said, this is the rest wherein ye may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing Yet they would not. So the stammering tongue is what you get when you receive the Holy Spirit. It said they spoke with stammering tongues. And of course, as you continue to let the Spirit take control, you, you it moves on from stammering tongue to be able to, to speak clearly. I remember when the Holy Spirit first come and you could feel the, the presence of God taking control over your mouth. And that's what we need to get to the point where God is controlling our mouth. Thank you, Jesus. And it starts out with stammering tongue. And he says, um, this is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to rest. Enter into the rest of Christ and cease it from our own labor, letting God be Lord over our lives. That's what it's talking about. Okay, and we're gonna jump down to um jump down to verses uh hallelujah, <laughs> verses sixteen, and it says here, um, therefore thus says the Lord, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, 
a stone, a tried stone, a precious stone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. In other words, he that believeth in Christ, okay, shall not make haste. In other words, you at this point, when you understand that the foundation stone is Christ, you're focused on Christ. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. You understand that that's the only way you're going to make it in these season and time is you got to be in Jesus Christ. And Jesus himself said, except you be born of the water and the spirit, you cannot enter to the kingdom of heaven. In fact, you are none of his. Now, some people still got this crown of pride on, which he coming after that. Okay. And it says, judgment also will I lay um, to the lion and righteousness to the plummet. And he shall, and the hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies and the waters shall overflow the hiding places. So God is talking not necessarily about the storms that we see happening, the volcanoes erupting, but the refuge that people have when he starts talking about pride. I'm going to be able to make it. I'm going to be able to, all that knowledge I have and all this stuff I have as a refuge in my spirit and in my soul, I'm going to hold on to that. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to hold on to that. And that's going to keep me in the time of testing and trial. When God don't say he coming, he's going to bring down the spirit of pride. It says, uh, verses 18 of the 28th, and your covenant with death shall be a disannulled, and your agreement with hell shall not be not stand. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, then ye shall be trodden down by it. From the from the time that it goeth forth, it shall take you. From morning by morning shall it pass over, by day and by night, and it shall, in other words, vexation only to understand the report. What is going on? It's gonna be vexing. And if you ever been in a state where your mind cannot rest, you ever got so um, caught up mentally, you could not sleep, you could not eat, your mind just kept going. I call it, it's, I think they should say like a brain worm. You just couldn't shut it off. Okay, the time is going to come that God going to be dealing with man on the inside. Okay, for the bed is shorter than a man and that man can stretch himself on it and the covering narrow than that he cannot wrap himself in it. For the Lord shall raise up as a as in Mount Perum, and and be a wrought as in the valley of Gibeon, that he may do his work, his strange work, and bring to pass his acts. This strange, it says, Now therefore be ye not mockers, lest your bands be made strong, for I have heard from the Lord God of hosts a consumption even determined upon the whole earth. Okay, God is going to bring something upon the whole earth, and it's not going to just be physical, it's going to be mental. Okay, and all this attitude about uh, I got it made and without praying, without getting into the word, it's not going to work. I'm telling you, only thing going to keep us and take us through the times of storm is to be rooted and grounded in Christ. Okay, give ye ear and bear my voice and hear my voice, hearken and hear my speech. Does the plowman plow all day to sow? Does he open and break up the clods of the ground? Okay. And when he has made plain the faces thereof, does he not cast abroad the fetches? And so in other words, when we talk about uh, the plowman plowing all day, we're going over to the talking about what is what the plowman is God. And God is plowing all the time. And we're going to the prophet Hosea. God is moving in the hearts of man to plow up and to break up the hardness of the hearts of men. Thank you, Jesus. And that's what God is doing now. He is breaking up that heart. And Hosea, beginning at the um, the the tenth verse of Hosea, the tenth chapter, going beginning there, and it says, um, "It is it is in my desire that I should chasten them, and the people shall be gathered against them when they shall bind themselves in their two furrows or in their two rows, and Ephraim as in a heifer." That is taught, love it to tread out the corn, but I pass over upon her fair neck. I will make Ephraim to ride, Judah shall plow, and, and Jacob shall break the clods. Sow to yourselves in righteousness and reap in mercy. Break up your feral ground. Thank you, for it's time to seek the Lord. It's time to seek the Lord. And it's talking here about Judah and Ephraim. So really God is going after his own people right now to break up the feral ground. And that's the conditions of the heart. So that the ground, that the word can fall on good ground. It says Ephraim is as a heifer 
that is taught and love it to tread out the corn. So Ephraim is talking about that heifer who is, you know what a heifer is, a cow. Oh, now they call women heifer, but it means a person who uses, I'm just doing my thing and it don't matter what's happened. But God is calling Ephraim, that means all of his children who is just doing their thing, doing their own thing, treading out the corn, uh, going through the cornfields, doing uh, in the bountiful fields of God, working in the fields of God and just doing what they want to do. But not really, as he said, it's time to seek God. It's time to come closer to God. It's time to understand. It says, be very sure that your anchor is holding and grip that solid rock. That rock is Christ. It says, even as as a heifer that is taught and loveth to tread out the corn, but I pass over upon her neck. I uh, will make Ephraim to ride, and Judah shall plow, and Jacob shall break up the claws. So you shall got um, with Jacob. You know, you talk about the whole tribes of Israel. But he breaking them down to um, Ephraim is riding, and I thought about this particular. Um, situation when it talks about in the spiritual realm when you are is judah is plowing and so so judah is plowing that means you're preaching the word you're so you are getting the ground removing the stones that's the purpose of, of, of when you plow a field which means the heart of man you do it with the word of god Thank you, Jesus. Not just, he says, moving on from the milk, going on to the meat, the hard things, to remove up those stones, those hidden things, and those deep things in the hearts of people. And that's why the word of about Judah will plow, and Ephraim will ride. Thank you, Jesus. And once the, the word is preached, then Ephraim will, uh, meaning in the spiritual realm now, in the spiritual realm, whether or not you in Judah, or are you uh, in Ephraim? Now, if you're in Judah, your job is to plow. You are to plow. You are to send the word. And not just the, the, the good, sweet things that people want to hear. Okay? You've got to give them that there is a heaven and there is a hell. And whether or not it says if you do not warn them that they are on their way to hell, then their sins will be on you. So you just this plow again. If you know anything about plowing, it, it, it's, it's, it's a burdensome thing. Using the oxes to plow, uh, use in the oxes, use it to plow. And then it talk about uh, Ephraim will ride upon it. it uh, Ephraim will hear the word of God. Ephraim, and they're talking about in, in the spiritual sense, whether or not you are laboring to break up the ground and hearts of being, or you are the one who is hearing that word and you, you're getting taken hold of it, okay? And it says, Jacob shall break up the claws and the lumps. So it's talking in the spiritual realm what is going on. And so we're going to go down a little bit further. It's so to yourselves righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your foul ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Um, ye have plowed wickedness, ye have reaped iniquity. Ye have uh, eaten the fruit of the lies, because thou didst trust in thy way, in the multitude of thy mighty men. And in God, you could go to and says, therefore shall a tumult arise among thy people, and all thy uh, fortresses shall be uh, spoiled. So, in other words, when you talk about judgment beginning first in the house of God, what is going to keep us rooted and grounded and be able to withstand? It's going to be the word of God. Okay, we're going to go now into uh, Jeremiah, talking about breaking up this ground, which is conditioned in the heart. Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter, uh, the 29th verse. I think it's the 23rd chapter. Um, and the reason we tell him, tell him it doesn't, God is not going to be doing this work all day long. He's not just going to wait for you, okay? A lot of people think, well, you know, I got to do what I want to do, and God will be there when I get ready to come in. Then God will be there. He'll be there waiting for me. Thank you, Jesus. But it says the plowman does not plow all day long, okay? The plowman is not going to plow all day long. There's a time and a season for God to deal with us, okay? There's a time and a season. Jeremiah, I'm going to go to Jeremiah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 23, verse 29. We're going to go there right quick. And then we're going to, uh, and the reason this is, is encourage those, if you are not rooted and grounded in the word and you like, uh, um, Ephraim, 
you know, I'm just kicking up my heels and do whatever I'm going to do. And, and I could get serious about God a little bit later. It's not time. He says, time to move on from the milk. And the milk means it's a baby attitude. You know, um, things are going to be good and, and I'm going to get sweets. And I'm, No, you got to get to the point you understand that some serious stuff is coming up on the earth and you're not going to be able to withstand it without the word. Uh, Jeremiah 23. Now we're going to the verse 29. Okay, let's start at verse 23. We're going to start at verse chapter 23, verse 23. I am a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off. Can any hide himself in secret places that he that I shall not see him, saith the Lord? Okay. Does not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord? I have heard what the prophets say that prophesied lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed and I have dreamed. In other words, making people feel good and none of this, all this going to continue on as it was, but that's not true. Okay. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of uh, deceit of their own hearts, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor as his as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. For the prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream, and he that hath my word, let him speak uh, my word faithfully. What is the, the, uh, the chaff to the wheat, says the Lord? What is the chaff to the wheat? You know, we talk about he's going to separate the chaff and the wheat. He says, is it not my word like a fire and the Lord and like a hammer? that breaketh the rocks of pieces or breaks up the claws. It says, is not my word like a fire. So when you talk about what is the chaff to the wheat? Now, a lot of things is chaff is, is, is just on the outside. It looks, it looks like it's, 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 it's prosperous, but it's not. We talk about God going after the inner, inner man, not just the outward. He going after the inner man and he got to have Christ on the inside. He said, it's not my word like a fire, which means he's going to burn up all the chaff, uh, and says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rocks in, in as a hammer. So his word is going to break up the, the claws. It's going to break up all the things that, um, that are not prosperous. That is what this word is talking about. So now we're going to go to um, Amos, praise God. And the reason I brought this up, I believe, because I realized myself that the only thing that keep you when nobody is there but you, thank you, Jesus, it's got to be God on the inside. If God's word is not in you, you're not going to have the peace of God. He said, my peace I give unto you, not as the world. But God gives you his peace that even in the time of fire and flood and surgery and hungry, what's going to keep your soul except the word of God? Now, Amos, the, um, the eighth chapter, and that's where we're going to end this here. Um, the eighth chapter of Amos, beginning at the, um, you can read all of it, but I'm going to, uh, uh, it says Je uh, Jehovah's full case against Israel. But it says the verse 11 of the eighth chapter, behold, the day cometh, saith the Lord, that I will send a famine in the land. Not a famine of bread, nor of thirst for water, but for the hearing of the word of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from north even unto the east. And they shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. So in order for these ground to be broke up in your heart, and to, 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 to get you uh, to the place where the word can get, it's going to be time, you're not going to get these words. That's what Judah is plowing. Ephraim is riding and, and, and Jacob is breaking up the claws. So the, the, that's the ministry of God or the spirit of God working in the various vessels. Some is sowing uh, uh, the word. Some is watering the word. But before it's even sown or watered, it got to be plowed. The, 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 the feral ground has to be plowed and not with milk. And, 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 and sweet things. It's all about you. It got to be giving some hard work. As you say years ago, it's, it may be tight, but it's right. It's got to be the hard work. It's time for people to be talking about heaven and hell, okay? Because heaven, that's what's going to come down to. It can't go by, well, all this spirit of pride. That God is going after that. 
and he said the time will come there will be a famine and his word he to he saw from the prophet his word is a is, is a fire and it's a hammer but if there's no preaching of the word and there's no teaching of the word and there's no giving of the, the meat of the word then that ground gonna be hard okay okay you got to plow first you got to plow that ground with some serious meat so we're praying remember i want you to keep in thought the plowman does not plow all day long there's only a time for this and god is plowing these fields which means these hearts to break up the feral ground break up the hardened ground through the things that we are going through even in me okay I realize that when you get ready to go under a knife and somebody's going to give you an artificial hip and you wonder how you're going to come by, even now I got to go through, uh, you know, rehabilitation and medicine and all that kind of stuff. But I've been through a few things, but you got to know without a shadow of a doubt that your soul is anchored in Christ, that your soul is rooted and grounded in Christ. When the time come, when everybody forsake you, your mother and father forsake you, your husband, your children, everybody forsake you, you got to know that you have the soundness of mind Thank you, Jesus. And that you are holding fast to God's unchanging hand. As that song said, my faith is on ta- uh, heaven, table land. No higher plane than I have found. Plant my feet on higher ground. So I'm in here to encourage you because I find out it, it ain't going to end. It's not going to finish until you get ready to go home. Apparently, we're going to fight this fight all the way to the end. Okay, so we pray that this is encouraging. Look at those scriptures, go back and, be, and, and meditate on them. And if your heart is hardened in any way, let that word break up that ground. And then don't put on this, this, this uh, crown of pride. Pride is not going to help you. In fact, Leviathan is the king of, of, of the children of pride. Pride will not help. We need to break up the feral ground and let God have his way in us. Okay. I'm just here to encourage you. What is strengthens me and helps me through my trials is the fact of the word of God. It's always been the word. Let us pray. Father, we thank and praise you for your abiding presence. Thank you for your word, a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We are clean through the word which you have spoken to us. The only way we can break up this hardened heart and, and have a new heart is to let the word break it up, Lord God, and uproot everything that's not like you and everything that's not pleasing in your sight, Lord God. Remove the stumbling blocks and the stumbling stones out of our lives. Thank and praise that every root of bitterness and everything that stop our shelter that's not of you, Lord God. Help us to cast it aside. Help us to denounce it, Father, in the name of Jesus. Help us to abide in you and that your word abide in us. I pray for the hearers of your word and not only the hearers, but the doers. Help us to be not only hearers, but the doers of your word that thank and praise you, Lord God, that your will your way and your word will be done in us and through us. That's the only thing that's going to keep us. Help us, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for writing your laws on the very tables of our heart. In the time of testing and trial, we'll be able to endure as good soldiers of the cross for we commit ourselves into your hands. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Remember, the plowman does not plow all day. And the time will come, as Amos said, there will be a famine of the word of God. Hallelujah. And we pray that we, in this season while the word is still going forth, that we have an ear to hear and a heart to receive that word, that that ground will be broken up, that the word will take root in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray and count it done. Amen. Amen.